from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Yo, it's your boy, holla back. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. All righty. Tom Likas could not be with us today. He is <laughs> in perfect health for a man of his uh, mentality. There's a certain line between uh, uh, genius and madness, and I think he jumps it every now and again. Uh, anyway, I'm a huge fan, and it's an honor to sit in for Tom Likas. My name's Danny Bonaducci. I have a radio show in Los Angeles from 2 to 3 on 97.1 FM, if you'd like to listen to that. Uh, very cool. Thank you for letting me plug that. And now I'm just going to jump back to uh, the phones. Let's just jump into... Here we go. Anthony. Hey, that's my brother's name. Hey, what's up, Danny? First what? time, long time, man. What's uh, up, buddy? What's going on, man? Screw your uh, naysayers and those stupid... Nah, you got it. You got it. Ignorance, man. Ignorance is bliss. You know what I mean? No kidding on that. I'm with you a thousand percent, but you got to don't tell me the show would be less interesting if everybody just called up because so far nobody wants to talk about too much. You know, if I was here for a week or like it was my show, it's a show that we usually talk about something since I'm just in for Tom. I'm just going to go random phones or what I call open phones America and I'm just taking any call about anything. So I don't think the show would be nearly as entertaining if some people didn't call up and hate me. Absolutely. What, what, hey, uh, Danny, what's your uh, what's your take on Kimball Slice? What, what do you think of Kimball? That is so weird. There's a there's a call. You're on line six. There's a call around line two about Kimbo Slice. That and you just uh, you've been on hold for 48 minutes, and he's been on hold four minutes. So I took yours <laughs> first. Uh, uh, I think that he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he got famous. He was the first million dollar uh, UFC or cage fighter. You know, there's so many of them breaking out now, but I believe he's still considered a UFC fighter, right? Uh, MMA. MMA, right. I'm sorry. MMA. Uh, so what he did was he'd throw these backyard matches, beat the bejesus out of people, and send them to YouTube. Uh, became a star, and then, in my opinion, just about got his ass beat on his first million dollar payday, and then did get his ass beat just the other night. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't I think he's the real that. deal at all. I used to, there's a lot of people that I thought were the real deal. See, in boxing, I can tell right away because it's the sweet science. It's, uh, you know, there were, uh, uh, Chavez just had the heart, biggest chin and the biggest heart. Muhammad Ali actually did float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. What, George Foreman should have killed him in the thriller in Manila. Absolutely, Absolutely. should have killed him. And, uh, Muhammad Ali's whole strategy, and, you know, he's this, the reason he's one of my heroes. I'm going to take a beating till this guy can't beat me anymore. And when he's too tired to beat me anymore, I'm going to knock him out. That is such a hard-ass line to take, to say, I'm just going to get beat till this. And they called him a savage at the time. He happens to be one of the sweetest men in the world now. He's converted his whole life. He's very religious, uh, George Foreman. But if you've ever seen uh, the documentary When We Were Kings, he was considered just uh, almost an animal, just, to just that he was just going to kill people and he's going to rip Muhammad Ali's arms off and things. And Muhammad Ali said the only strategy, because I'll never hurt this man while we're swinging and fighting in the middle of the ring, he took a beating on purpose for, I think, 10 rounds. That That's a man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other one would be Sugar Ray standing toe-to-toe with Roberto Durand when he didn't have to. Let, let me ask you a quick question. How long have you been boxing now? Uh, I've been boxing. I fought Donny Osmond at, at a fundraiser in 1994, and he almost won because I ran out of air at the end of round one. And he killed me in round two because I couldn't even swing. And in round three, he still would have won, but he got a bloody nose, and that freaked him out. So I won by a decision. And ever since then, I've been taking boxing a lot more seriously. So off and on since 1994. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I do some uh, MMA myself. I actually have a uh, blown ACL uh, medial meniscus tear right now. So unfortunately, I'm uh, I'm out of. Dude, the, that's uh, very serious. You're out for a while. What? Pardon me. You're out for a while. That's real serious. Oh yeah, yeah. I've actually uh, blown my right knee uh, before too, and it's uh, actually almost the same exact injury. If uh, by the way, you know, the next thing to go will be your rotator cuff. <laughs> I promise you that. That's the way it goes. And, uh, you know, I know my, because I was a blackout drunk, and as you know, I box, and as some of you know, I'm a third degree black belt. When I used to get drunk and fight, I used to get drunk and win, and people would be all left up, and I'd be getting sued. And as the drinking g pursued and got worse, I started losing, like, real seriously. You know what? I found out something very, a life lesson here. 
when I, because I used to teach karate too for a living. Well, I got paid by the class, like an aerobics instructor. I would come in and I would teach a class and they'd give me $30 to teach that class that day. Uh, if you want to be tough, you just go down to the worst neighborhood in the worst part of town, go up to the biggest guy in the bar and spit in his beer. When you get out of the hospital, do it again. When you get out of the hospital, do it again. And when you get out of the hospital, do it again. And this time, don't go to the hospital. Send him to the hospital. And you're a tough guy. No one's ever going to teach you that. You can never train. That's why when I fight these guys, that's why I'm 12-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts. And the, the last guy I fought was 215. The guy before him was only 20 years old or something like that. Six foot one and 211 pounds knocked him out. The reason I always win is because I ask one question and one question only. Have they ever been in the ring? And if the answer is no, I accept the fight no matter how big they are. Because you can't train for your first fight. Your trainer busts you in the face a little too hard and snaps your head back and shocks you. He goes, are you all right? You all right? Okay, that was just to get you used to getting getting hit. Okay, so that's got him get, you know, getting used to hit number one. But he stops and says, are you okay? Because he can't injure you. You've got to show up for a fight. You're not prepared to get into the ring with a guy who hits you as hard as he can. And instead of saying, are you all right? His eyes light up like he's six years old and it's Christmas morning. I'm going to kill you now because you're hurt. You can't train for that moment. Your second fight, you can train for. But if you're not a real fighter, because some of these guys, you know, no one's ever been in the ring before. I've never fought, although I am thinking of having one pro fight. I'll get my ass kicked for sure. But I'm thinking of having one pro fight on my 50th birthday. You know, I'd have to fight another pro. I'd have to go four three-minute rounds, which I don't think I could do right now anyway. But I think I might have a pro fight on my 50th birthday just so I can look back and be one of those. Because who wants to be the guy that looks back? You know, I mean, uh, Breaking Bonaduce was the number one rated uh, 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 cable series in, like, the history of VH1. But I'll always be the guy from the Partridge family. You want to be the old guy telling kids that never heard of you before in your whole life, right when I was on this TV show? No, I'd much rather be the guy that says, you know, back when I was fighting pro, and I could do that if I have one pro fight. So I'm thinking about doing it as a novelty because I'm going to get my ass kicked. That's a what? <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't hurt that bad. You, uh, and a pro will probably just knock me out and get knocked out. doesn't hurt at all. What hurts is, like I said before, if you don't protect yourself, if you're knocked out on your feet, standing straight up, when you fall, you don't protect yourself. The concussion never comes from the hit. I don't know if you know this or not. It's called the button. And the button is either side of your chin with a hook. There's a nerve right under your earlobe. And if you push on it, like if somebody's got you in a headlock, you just push on that nerve, they'll let you go. Well, your chin will roll up over that, no, uh, that nerve, and it's called lights out. Boom, they're out. But you've done no real damage at all. You just rolled their jawbone over the button. But then they fall straight backwards like a tree and don't protect themselves, and their head hits the canvas, and their brain hits their skull. And the, can and the concussion is from the fall, not the hit. The hit, if you didn't break their jaw, that almost never happens with a decent mouth guard. That, the concussion, is from knocking them out while they're still standing straight up, and they fall down like a tree and don't protect themselves. Uh, let's see. There have been just a bunch of people... I want to talk to. I can't believe I finally got a four-hour show, and I'm going to make the same complaint. I just don't have enough time. Uh, Dante. Hey, Dante, how are you? I'm very well. I, I take it you're aware, then, that my first legal name is actually Dante. Yeah, I knew about that. I knew about that a long time ago. You know, I heard you on the other station. Everywhere you've been, man, I've been listening to you. I'm a real big fan of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, but you know, but now I go so far as that, but I go so far as to uh, uh, looking at similarities between both of us, and it's, it's incredible, like, the fact that you know, just the, the way you are when it comes to friendship, the way you are when it comes to remembering good things that happen, and also, you know, the, uh, the way I am, too, you know, about, uh, you know, bad things that happen to me, you know what I mean? I hold in grudges, stuff like that. I mean, you and I are, like, identical when it comes to crap like that. Wow, you know? what's, what's your middle name? My middle name is Samuel. My middle name is Daniel. Uh, um, <laughs> so, basically, uh, it says on the screen that I speak the way you do, but I make more money at it. You, do, you know what? I don't know what I did wrong to not be clear with that, but you and I are identical in the way that we think about things. I get a little bit more articulate than I am. I admit that, too. You know? Well, you know what? I appreciate the compliment, but uh, you know what? If uh, if I speak the way you think and people are giving me kudos these days and paying my rent in in uh, because of my verbiage on the radio, there there's a guy named Jack Silver. He's the program director of the radio station I work at in L.A. on uh, 97.1. Uh, you know, do a, a send them a little tape or something. You know, if I got into radio and just keep listening, I'll continue to answer uh, during uh, after I hang up on you uh, to open some phone lines. 
I walked into radio, and here's I've made more money in my best year of radio. I made more money in one month than I made in four years of the Partridge Family. Partridge Family paid me four hundred dollars a week, only twenty six weeks a year, and only uh, and with no residuals. So uh, let's imagine I made. Uh, four hundred dollars a week for two years is what it comes out to. That's all the part to try money. Everybody thinks I blew this vast fortune on cocaine and hookers. I was fourteen, dude. I had like twelve bucks. <laughs> so there's only like two hookers. <laughs> but there was no, you know. Uh, but anyway, I walked into radio unemployed. In, I was living in my mother's basement trying to straighten out off drugs uh, in 1988, and I finally straightened up enough that I wasn't afraid to go outside. A guy said, hey, uh, I'm Welch of Welch and Woody, and they couldn't have sucked worse. And they invited me on their show, and they asked me every question that I had been asked for the past 30 years. But they were so full of themselves, they thought that they had made these questions up. Like, did you really play your own instrument? Did you ever have sex with Susan Day? Is David Cassidy gay? Did you like the red per or velvet suits? It's like... If you don't have a pretty good answer for a question you've been asked 1,100 times over the last 25 years, you're kind of adult and should probably wear a helmet when you walk the streets. So I had reasonably good answers. But because these guys were such egomaniacs, they thought they were their questions, which means I'm a comic genius to have such funny answers at the go. Next thing I know, I'm in radio. And within two years, I was, I was in, the, in the, and I don't want to brag or anything because it's not that big of a deal. It's like, it's not like this deal. It's not Corolla deal. But I'm, you know, I can pay for my wife's house and alimony and my house and my car. You know, I don't have a collection of cars, but I got a 67 GTO convertible that kicks ass, dude. And when I pull up next to a $300,000 Lamborghini Diablo, they dig my GTO. Totally. And my preference is my Harley Davidson because I pull up next to a $300,000 Diablo. And go, huh, that car looks beautiful. Wish it was moving. And then I just split lanes. It's got to bug the crap out of me. I got a car that will do 210 miles an hour. And I'm cruising through at 30 on a $9,000 Harley Sportster. I'd apparently got to take a break. Dude, the show is too short. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm Dave Monaducci filling in for my hero, Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas Show. Hey, kids, you are listening to The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. My name is Danny Bonaducci. I have the distinct honor of filling in for Tom Likas while he uh, is off today. He'll be back tomorrow. Uh, so I am going to just jump to the phones. And uh, it's funny, I brought in all this work and all these subjects, and I tried my best. I did the Jose Consego. I did, I did you know, I brought up, you know what to talk about. You want to talk what's ever on your mind. I would say that... During the 14 years that I did not work, and everybody gives me this the, the giant drug head thing, which I think I was during about seven of those years, I sat on the back of a boat that I lived on that had no engines and no bilge pump. I used to every day have to bucket it out so it wouldn't sink. But all I did was read. So I can probably carry on a reasonable conversation on almost any subject. So if you want to stay random and call in at 1-800-5800-TOM, Let's have at it, kids. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go just right down the old lines there. Julie. Hey, Daddy. How hey. are you, dude? I'm doing extraordinarily well. Julie, how are you? Good. I got to tell you. Okay, like, back in February, I had to have this back surgery. The... Yeah, I grew together. Yeah. That'll happen. Exactly. That'll happen every now and again. Usually, it's a uh, you have an abundance of cartilage and a bunch of uh, um, over uh, saturation of iron in your body, and they'll fuse two of your uh, uh, vertebrae. Exactly. So what I have to do, I have to go back to work and everything. I got to get off my, you know, off my rear end and my back because it's like I'm out of pain and I'm still on board. But I try to keep it down really good. What are you still on? I'm so sorry, you cut out. What are you still on? Norco. Yeah. Yeah. I only I only do six a day, so that ain't too bad. But six Norco know. a day. Yeah. So as I'm as junkies as junkies go, that's not bad. My friend that yeah. was addicted to Norco did fifty five a day, and when I told Doctor Drew that, he said he has patients that do over a hundred a day. 
So I, it, that's one of the reasons I never got addicted to that drug is because I noticed while I was taking that particular drug or any kind of um, Vicodin was that the first one I ever took after surgery, like I said, I have steel plates in every single part of my, in both arms and both legs, um, that I noticed the first time I, I took them when I wasn't in pain, I took them for recreation, I got really high. I thought this was awesome. By the end of maybe two weeks, I was taking four at a time. By the end of the prescription, I was taking seven at a time. It's the most, it's not like crack where you'll sell your soul and you'll become a prostitute and you'll do whatever it takes because you can find these things. But the tolerance builds up so fast. Plus, and I don't mean to be indelicate, Julie, don't you find the constipation to be a bit of a problem? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So, anyway, so God, I love knowing to, everything. Keep the, the pain meds down, you know, I, I get off my back on lunch, right? Right. So I'm, I lay down in the back seat of my car every day at lunch. So I go out, my lunch is from 2 to 3, and I take that so that I can listen to a certain radio program every single day. So I get out to my car today, and you're not on. But, I'm like, oh, what the <laughs> hell? But then I was so pleasantly surprised that I get you for four hours instead. So that's the only way I eat up by other than that. Cause I do. I plan my lunch break around your show. You're, ver you. you're very kind, and I will tell you, uh, do yourself a favor, and, you know, I'm I'm all in favor, like I was saying earlier, I don't know if you're listening about your pursuit of happiness, but... Sometimes your pursuit leads you to where you don't want to be, and Norco, which is just super whammy, extra strength Vicodin, builds up such a tolerance that even if you, your body can withstand the punishment that that does to your liver, your, your bank account cannot stand up to taking 50 a day at $4 a piece on the black market. Now, I'm, I'm like really afraid of the addiction. Good. Thing. So, like, you I, should I'm be. really good. Cause, you know, actually before the surgery, I was, uh, I was taking morphine. I was taking, what, 90 milligrams of morphine and 4,000 milligrams of Vicodin a day just so that I could go to work. And then after the surgery, I like totally cut out the morphine altogether, you know, cause I was like totally afraid of any kind of addiction thing. So, you know what, see, and I listen to you. I kind of tell you something. You want to hear a horrible story? My brother's wife uh, passed away of uh, cervical cancer, and it was about time she wouldn't. The poor woman would not pass, and it went on for years and years. It was awful and horrible, and finally she passed. And my brother and I, because we had been waiting, and just you know, it was a horrible life for her. And when she she passed, everybody was relieved. We she couldn't keep anything down, no pills, no food, or anything. Uh -huh. We both went to her funeral on morphine suppositories. <laughs> now that's a dignified way to say goodbye thank you very much for the call alright this guy I usually make you wait your turn I'm going to go to the neck injury guy who's been on hold uh, for 79 minutes but first this guy's only been on hold for 2 minutes but I just I never understand this phone call I don't know why anybody would ever make this call hi Ray hey how you doing Danny I'm good thank you what's up I'm going to tell you memory uh, I'm 50 years old also and uh, did flying trapeze uh, since I was about 7 years old right on and I was out in California we were working Howard Seas produced the circus and they had all sorts of celebrities and stars that came in 10 days was in the football stadium and 10 days was in the building and Warren McCormick was there Adam West Burt Ward and um, uh, I was doing a flying act there I was probably about 13 years old same as you and you were there man uh, you probably don't remember but uh, you were there and uh we hung out briefly, uh, uh, several members of your cast came to that show, and uh, the second time I'm going to touch your memory is about a month ago, were you on uh, in the Northeast around Ringling Red and Celebration Circuits? Uh, the Northeast, as in Philadelphia? Yeah. Yeah, I fought a guy there that weighed 215, I knocked him out in the first, and he was saved by the bell, and I knocked him out in 10 seconds of the second. Yeah, well, my ex-wife called me, and she had just spoken to you as a little short, chubby, real pretty Mexican girl, her name was Claudette. And she goes, do, do you remember that uh, that uh, Danny from that time in California and blah, blah, blah. So I was in a radio show and there it was. But what I called for, hey, we ought to put the two industries together, man, and have a boxing match. I'm a UFC freak and uh, you're a hell of a fighter. Let's put something together. Well, uh, thank you. The problem with that is this last guy I fought is a nobody from uh, the Stern Network, but he has a, a, a show like on Sunday nights. And I had to actually make him famous. 
uh, by talking about him enough for anybody to be interested in the fight. And <laughs> if so, if you and I, because you seem like a very nice guy, but you're in Dallas, if you just like to go a couple of rounds fooling around and being friends, there's nothing I like more. What oh, I don't great. like is actually trying to hurt another human being or get hurt with no profit in it. If you want to be like buddies, I spar with my buddies all the time. If you if you right. come out to L.A. and you get a hold of me, which is easy to do, everybody knows where I am. Uh, I you know I'll go to my gym and we'll have a, a heavyweight uh, referee. So if either of us gets stupid, they'll separate us. But I think it's a very friendly. What do you weigh, Danny? I weigh one sixty five. Well, now I'm about one seventy. Well, I'm a little over six foot and two thirty. That's okay, as long as we're doing it for fun. I mean, if you hit me with it, if you knock me out and it's by accident, I won't care at all. If you get mean and use your size and weight against me, then you're kind of a jerk and I'll just quit and walk off. But I, it doesn't matter how big you are, as long as you're my friend and think this is interesting. You know, it's like fencing, except you have a, a cork on the end of your sword. Same deal. I'll spar with you as friends, no problem, knowing full well at your size and weight that you could destroy me. I just think it's yeah, fun. You're pretty fast, man. I've heard some things about you. But I can leave my cell phone with the other guy if you want. And um, if you want to put it together, I have no way of getting in touch with you once I'm out Let me put you, I'm going to put you on hold right now. I, I think I did that, right? Uh, grab this gentleman's phone number. That'd be, you know, if he comes out, that'd be really fun. Uh, let's see. I have no idea who to go to. I'm going to go with... Uh... Oh, this one. I'm waiting for this one. There we go. Okay, cool. Hi, this is uh, Danielle, right? Oh, Danielle, please be there. I've been waiting on you. Danielle in West Covina or Daniel? Daniel. Oh, okay. I, 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 I read it wrong. My apologies. What's up, don't Daniel? Even, don't even trip. Hey, Danny, just want to say thank you for getting me on the air, man. I appreciate talking to you very much. I appreciate you waiting 41 minutes and 55 seconds, and I apologize for the wait, but there's nothing I can do, bro. Uh, that's cool. That's cool, Danny. Danny, I got two things. I got a favor, and I got a question to ask you, if you don't mind. I bet I can do both. All right. One favor, Danny. You still in the weight training, man? Yeah. Danny, I would appreciate it. Just one day, I'll drive over there just to work out with you one day, man. Where do you live? I live in West Covina, but I drive to Venice Beach all the time. You know, uh, actually, I was just talking to the manager of the uh, Gold's Gym in uh, Venice. We can go there if you want. Uh, and, but I live across the street from LA Fitness. I mean, I, you know, I don't. I'm not kidding when I say people that listen to my radio show rather than someone else's. Pay my bills. They put food on my family's table. If you choose me, there's some guy on against me somewhere. I don't know who he is because I'm on the air, so I can't hear his show. But the fact that you pick me pays my rent. So if you want to get together and work out sometime, that's, you know, if any of my bosses that wear suits came up and asked me, I'd say, sure, yes, sir. I'd be saying, it'd be great. You're no, they're no more my boss than you. If you go away, I'm fired. So therefore, they're not my boss anymore. So I look at you as my my boss. You think it'd be fun to work out with me? You choose me over somebody else to listen to. I couldn't like you more for the privilege. I'd be happy to work out with you. If uh, you want to hold on, I'll get your phone number as well. Cool. Okay, it looks like I'm going to be busy working out and sparring 230-pound guys. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. listening to the Tom Like Show. I'm Danny Bonaduce filling in for my friend Tom. He'll be back tomorrow. Uh, by the way, I, I mentioned this to Tom one time 10 years ago or more. When he started a show, he started a show with an I am not a convicted felon. And I always thought he was going after me. <laughs> he wasn't, it turned out. I, I, no, it wasn't nearly as important as I thought. Uh, I'm going to go to a couple of random phone calls then. Luckily, we have some really good ones. That are going to wrap up this show, and I'm going to be sad, even though I finally got my four hours, even though they're Tom's, and I could never replace that man. But uh, it's still too short. This is too much fun. Uh, this guy was next, so I am going to him, no matter how weird of a phone call it is. Hey, Mike in Anaheim. Hey, how's it going, Danny? I just want to make a quick comment. Um, I've been listening to you now since about 4 o'clock, and no one is cursed that I've heard of. Uh, we had one guy curse, and I believe uh, Art got uh, dumped him in time. Oh, okay. But anyways, um, I got a question. I was in a car accident um, a few weeks ago, and um, 
cars totaled and everything like that. I got like a neck injury, and I know you've been sued uh, numerous times. And I just wanted your opinion on suing the other guy and his insurance company. What you want is the uh, opinion of a lawyer who works on contingency. Now it seems like a lot to give a guy usually. Uh, bare minimum 25% of your settlement for your pain, uh, and usually 33% of your settlement for your pain. But a, a lawyer will tell you better than a doctor if you have a suit. You don't want to go into court. If a, if a, uh, uh, lawyer will not represent you on a contingency basis, it's because he doesn't believe you have a case. If a lawyer will not uh, represent you on contingency, do not spend your own money on going to court. Spend your own money on your medical bills. Hopefully your insurance will cover some things. But if you are in a, somebody hit you in a stolen car and you got a neck injury, you have a very serious uh, lawsuit. Uh, and I, I hate to even say this, but it's certainly against them and very possibly for negligence uh, against the city, although it's very difficult to sue the government, but not necessarily on a local level, um, for not protecting you by having some sort of making it more difficult to steal cars, negligence on there. They should not have had the weapon that injured you. The weapon that injured you is the automobile that they had no license for because they took it without permission, meaning they didn't do their job in the first place or they wouldn't have had the car to hit you with. Secondly, if you have the injury and it's bad enough and there is insurance, even though they're car thieves, they often have insurance, there is a, a lawsuit there and probably a lucrative one. But the person to ask is a lawyer and a lawyer. And I don't mean to disparage uh, lawyers in any great way, although Shakespeare said kill them all. That's what the man said. Start with kill all the lawyers. Uh, your lawyer will send you to a doctor of his choosing, uh, and they're usually a doctor that will back up your side of the story. I would go to your lawyer first and ask him, do I have a suit? And if he says yes, it's because he thinks he's going to get a third of your million bucks. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Danny. Uh, you're no problem, man. That's what I'm here for. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to go anyway and all. Michael. Yes. Michael, it says something about the rhino. What's up? Hey, Danny. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, the reason why I was calling, I was out of town. And I got, didn't get a chance to hear how much fun and what happened at your celebration party at the rhino. It was awesome. First thing is I, I carried all four belts in uh, because... I am in this, and it's an actually a sanctioned thing, although we have to wear headgear and 16 ounce gloves, but I've yet, I've only, I've had 12 fights and knocked out 10 of them, and they say that's physically impossible with 16 ounce gloves and headgear, but they've all, 10 out of them have gone out. Um, I carried it as since, I, they called me the middleweight champion of the world, but I've never fought anybody except two guys that were under 200 pounds. I think that makes me the heavyweight champion of the world. So I insisted, because I always give the money to charity, I insist that any time I fight a guy in a different weight class, I get a belt from that weight class. So I now have four different belts. So I walked in to, with, uh, to the Rhino with people behind me, like, like real pro fighters. Cause by the way, don't, don't get mistaken between, uh, a real boxer and me. I don't mind getting hurt that much and I have a big right. I suck at boxing. I'm not a good boxer at all. I'm not sitting here saying, and then I got him with a jab and then an uppercut and a hook. I hit him with my right hand repeatedly till he went unconscious. That's my boxing technique. And I hopefully do it before I run out of wind about 45 seconds into the first round. Uh, um, but the party was great. It was cool to have, you know, the belts and the girls paying all that much attention to me. And, you know, they gave me uh, rhino chips so I could give out free lap dances. It was like being king is what it was like. It was awesome. Great. That's awesome. Well, I, I, were you out there? Oh, I was out of town, so I missed out. So. Uh, dude, we're going to do something again. The Spearmint Rhino has been so uh, kind to me. I've been a big sponsor, and they come on, and uh, they've been they've been really good to me. So I'm sure we'll be doing more things with Spearmint Rhino. As a matter of fact, I was going to do a, a charity golf thing with them today, and then uh, this incident happened with Lycus, so he couldn't come in today, and I'm here instead. Or I'd have been with the Spearmint Rhino girls pretending to golf. Yeah, that's what I do. It's a rough day. It's a rough job. I hardly know what to do. Uh, yeah, Kimberly. Hi, Danny. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to um, call and let you know that you're doing, I think you're doing a great job. I've been listening to you on the radio, and I love, love listening to you on, on the radio whenever I can catch you. So 
I just heard that one gentleman calling and basically try and make you into like a cookie mold. But you no, know, I just wanted to let you know. I, I thought you're great. I love your opposing views and everything. Well, thank you. And I'll tell you what, Kimberly. First of all, I, I truly appreciate the compliment. Thank you. But if I can't hold my own in discussion with a guy who calls a radio station compared to a guy who works at a radio station, he deserves the job, not me. If I lose more than one out of, say, eight arguments on opposing views, then the other people should have this job and not me. If I brought up a topic or a statistic or the way the government runs or things that are bothering me and I'm wrong more often than I'm right, you're, they hired the wrong guy. So the fact that uh, people call up and hate me is cool as long as I can hang. And so far, I think I've done a fine job. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I think you're doing great, though. You know what's cool? That you're so nice and you live in Pleasantville? How, that's just like, that's ironic. That's very ironic. <laughs> do, do any girls ever call this show that live in Have Sex With Meville? Because, you know, that girl was pleasant, lived in Pleasantville. I just, what a time saver. They should just name towns of, like, what you want to do. Blowville. Uh, <laughs> Norco Town. <laughs> Of vodka, Romania. <laughs> just, I think that that's uh, the way they should name towns. Uh, of course, that's just me. Uh, let's see. Who do we have here? Absolutely nobody. Hit the wrong button. Uh, we've got uh, Bobby. What's up, Bobby? Danny Patucci, how are you? I'm extraordinarily well. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Danny, I, I, you know, the reason why I called, very simple. How is it possible to get you on the air longer than an hour? Because like that one caller said, I literally plan my lunches around your one hour. Uh, first of all, again, this is a weird moment to be in. Thank you so much. I, I don't really know. I am hoping, because they've made it clear to me that my bosses have been very kind, and don't get confused that this isn't a job just like any other, that I don't worry about meeting my bills like everybody else, and I'm as scared as everybody else in these uh, difficult times that we are having, and my contract is running out, and you cannot continue to pay me the kind of money they pay me to do a one-hour show. I hope they can figure out a solution, and they have made it clear to me that that's what they would like to do, that Jack Silver and Bob Moore and, uh, uh, you know, all the big guns have made it clear they really like me. I just don't see the math. How can they find it? Because Frosty and Frank uh, and Heidi are number one. Lycus is number one. It would be foolhardy of them to take any more of their time to put me in. So I just don't understand the math, but I am hoping to stay right here. I just couldn't take much. In these hard times, and this job is so fun, I would, in fact, take a pay cut, but I wouldn't take too much of a pay cut because I can't. I have an ex-wife, kids, how's that stuff? But I'm with you. I hope to God to stay right here. And, you know, to be honest with you, you know, people call me up and they know a whole lot about me and they talk about I met you in 1972 and I saw you on this show in 1985 and then you did that uh, reality show in, 19, in 2001 and then you did the other half. I'm an easily employed guy. I will get another radio show rather quickly. I've never felt more at home with a company than I feel with these particular people, like uh, uh, Jack Silver and, again, Bob Moore uh, and McLaughlin and all those people. They make me feel very comfortable. So I like being here. I just don't understand how they'll figure it out. But that's why they're the boss and I'm a jock. You know, I don't, I don't have to figure out stuff like that. They have to figure out stuff like that. Hope that they're they're hearing this, though. You know what I mean? I mean, I I, I don't know what else to do. I just can tell you that you're extremely entertaining. So. Thanks, man. I I appreciate that. You're very cool for calling. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, uh, Rich, you're online. What's up? Hey, the Dooch Man. I like that, the Dooch Man. I never had a nickname. Ace goes by or Corolla goes by the Ace Man and this Fast Daddy and all that stuff. I never. I tried to go with Debo. When Jennifer Lopez changes, shut up, Art. When uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez went to J Lo, I went to Devo, but it just didn't stick. Uh, oh, hey. so, so the douche man, I kind of like. What's up, Rich? What's up, dude? Hey, it's great hearing you, man. I uh, I moved up to Reno a month ago from Sacramento, and man, if if anything, you know, you got to get on the radio in Sacramento. Everyone loves you up there. You know what? I'm on the radio a lot in Sacramento. There's a morning guy there named uh, Dave Kelly. And he and I are, he's on a country station though, but he and I are very good friends and I do a lot of stuff up there. And my girlfriend Amy is from Sacramento. We spend Christmas and holidays with her family. So I'm in Sacramento all the time. It shouldn't be too hard. Unfortunately, just to give you the honest truth, which is what I always try to do on the show, I cannot pay my wife's alimony in Sacramento. Sacramento <laughs> just doesn't have the dough to pay me. Who can? Just, yeah. <laughs> well, I, there's a certain amount of money. I figured it out mathematically. 
on what they pay me now, I could still live. Not well, but pretty good. And I live in a fun area, and I have a jacuzzi on my roof, and a girl that likes to have sex. I'm, I'm kind of covered. Uh, but I can't take much less. So I guess they'll either have to figure something out, and I'm assuming they will. They seem to like me. That's cool. Are, are you still doing uh, your stand-up? Uh, I remember on Corolla... You used to have a lot of gigs. Uh, not a lot, because it scares me. But, yeah, I do enough of it to, uh, if one month I'm short on alimony, you better find out I'm playing Yuck Yucks in Cleveland. <laughs> Later, man. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Danny Bonaduce sitting in for his good friend, Tom Likas, who will be back tomorrow without question. Phone numbers are 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Alrighty, Tom Likas not here today. Could not be with us. We'll be back tomorrow, safe and sound. Well, as safe as that man can live, which I just dig about him. I'm Danny Bonaduce. Uh, uh, I consider myself a good friend of Tom's, and I was uh, willing to have my boys back and do his shift for him because he's been very kind to me in the past. Looks like we're going to have to wrap this up fairly shortly, so I'm going to bang onto these phones. Uh, let's see. Uh, this would be Richard. Hey, Richard. How's it going? Danny? Very well, thank you. What's up? I just wanted to call and uh, make restitution with you. I feel like I slighted you a little bit. What happened? Well, when you were on the Corolla show, I really hated you. And I had, I had called up the show and said, uh, you know, how much I hated you and they needed to get you off. Right. Well, they and, did. Uh, now that you got your own show, I really <laughs> love you. Oh, well, thank you. You know what? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Corolla has. He's a, he's a brilliant man, and I think what is happening is he's a tiny bit ahead of his time, and I think eventually the masses, because he is not like the masses at all, he is the most individual individual I know, and the mass appeal will only catch up when they become... Uh, as articulate and can follow what he says. He's almost, in some cases, too bright for his own good. And when he gets on a roll and I would try and chime in, people would call up and say, would you just shut up and let Adam talk? But my job description actually said, interrupt Adam as often as possible. I think that actually was my entire contract. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you're uh, I'm glad that you're on, Danny. And uh, if Jack Silver's listening, they need to give you some more time, give you a new contract. <laughs> you're very kind. I hope he's listening too, man. And and there's Roy, the big head cheese. But I worked for him for eight years. He and I are pretty good friends. Let's see. I hit six. That's Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Danny. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I think you're hot and totally amazing. Totally amazing. That's cool. And thank you. Amazing. I, and, uh, I I listen to your show normally. Um, and when I, I didn't hear you on, and then I heard you on like it, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you had a question about my website? Um, yeah, I wanted to get your website. Um, if on the off chance that, you know, your relationship with your girlfriend falls through, I could be the next in the queue. Well, you know, I'm thinking. Now, I, I don't know how you feel about this, <laughs> but I have a feeling... And Amy gets mad at me every time I say this, and she says I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I think Amy's four drinks away from playing both teams. That's, that's, I'm, she's the love of my life, and a sweet kid, and a 10th grade math teacher, and 26 years old, and I, I hope she doesn't feel I'm disparaging her in any way, but it is my opinion, she's three or four cocktails away from, you can come by and visit for an extended stay, Kim. Yeah, what I've heard, though, is that can be damaging to a, an existing relationship. Yeah, I don't you care. Want to do that, you I don't care. With someone. No, I mean, I love her and everything, but if I get a three-way out of it, then she breaks up with me, F her. Take my number, then. Dude, I mean, I, I, I really, I, well, you know, I, I love her and everything, but I like my kids, too. But a, a foursome and three of them are girls, I'll sell you one of those kids. And they're nice. I like them, my kids. They're cute. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, go to my, uh, uh, and just, you know what? Write to Amy. Go to my uh, MySpace. It's uh, myspace.com slash Bonaduce318. Okay. I just write, Dear Amy, let's have a threesome. Okay, I'll do it. 
Dude, I love you. I wish I had presents. I really totally wish I had presents. Well, you may, I promise if uh, uh, you come over and you talk Amy into this, there will be presents involved. <laughs> There'll be a little something extra in your envelope. I Actually, it'll happen. be me. <laughs> You'll get a little something extra in your envelope called Danny. Uh, so, yeah, give her a, and write to her, right? Dear Amy, I spoke to Danny on the radio today, and he said we should all do it. And I, I think a 10th grade math teacher is just going to go for that kind of logic. You know, we just should because Danny said so on the radio. But I'm trying to... Dude, I don't think I've ever given anything this much effort. I, I'm a third degree... Of, these are only two things because radio, like I said, if this job's hard, you're just not that good at it, in my opinion. But writing my book was very difficult and getting to be a third degree black belt was very difficult. Trying to get Amy hooked up with another chick is up there with writing a book and getting my black belt, man. I'm working at it every day. It's been two friggin' years, but I think she's about to break. I think she's about to break. I think I have time for uh, 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 one or two more calls, maybe just one. I don't know. Uh, let's see. This is Steve. What's up? Steve from Woodland hey. Hills. That's where I, used to, I was raised there. What's up, douche? I went to uh, Woodland Hills Elementary, man. Did you? Yeah. I think, it's still, I think it's back. I think it was gone for a little while, and now it's uh, back in business. Cool. What's up? Hey, just want to find out, uh, these fights that you're doing, uh, is there like a, like a website or something? Like, what is this that you're doing? Is it something uh, like if right now, thing? what you want to do, if you want to see me completely kill a guy, you can go to, uh, go to YouTube and write, uh, it's, uh, Danny Bonaducci, put under search Danny Bonaducci fights Lee something, but it should come up if you just put Lee in San yeah, Diego. What if, hey, what about if you want to get in there, uh, yourself? You know what? I don't, I, I don't think of myself as a, as a tough guy, but I, I, I think sparring as friendly guys is totally cool. I'd be all about that. All right, cool. Now call me up or go to my, again, go to my MySpace. It's just my name in 318, Bonaduce 318. And we'll go to my gym, and what I'll do is I'll have a guy that outweighs us by 100 pounds. Make sure we stay friendly, because if you accidentally hit a guy too hard and he interprets it as you did it on purpose, then things get stupid, and then you're not going out for cocktails later. And I hate that. I like it to be friendly and fun. You put on your headgear. Nobody gets hurt much. It's like a very, very, very serious pillow fight. Sure. No, I, that's what I was, I was wondering if this was like... Tough man thing that they had around. No, no, no. We'll just go to my gym. I go to Justin Fortune's gym on Sunset Boulevard. Justin would be happy to refer. You want to go like three one minute rounds because I don't have the wind for much more than that. But as long as you stay a gentleman and stay friendly and it's fun, it's just like, you know, fencing for sport or anything else. I'd be happy to do it. I, I do it all the time. It's my recreation. There you go, man. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, because I'm never going to get to all of these phone calls in the next, I got like, what, 20 seconds? Uh, let's see. Everybody has a Dallas, Burbank. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I should be home by around 7.30. I'm going to go to the corner of La Brea and Hollywood at 7.45 and just have a soda or something. There's these four silver ladies right on that corner. I'll be just sitting there, and we'll just chat for like 15 minutes, and then i got to take my girlfriend out to dinner. So 7.45, if you didn't get through on the phone, meet me at the corner of La Brea and Hollywood Boulevard. I'll be the guy sitting by the four silver ladies. See you later. Thank you to Tom Likas. The Tom Likas Show.